when you have an injured player that had success prior to the injury, you can't just throw him away due to the injury. You have to, because if you make the, the mistake and decide to move on from him based on what you saw over the last several games, the interceptions, the subpart play, even though you know and your medical staff knows that he's fighting injury, and he alluded to that, letting the world know, and then all of a sudden you decide you want something better. Now, if he was healthy and Aaron Rodgers was available, I'm taking Aaron uh, Rodgers. I mean, come on, of course. Right? I mean, that's just the reality. He's not in that it. bucket, as you would say. If he's healthy and something's better and we're looking at it, then yeah. But the fact that he's not healthy, you've got to give him the opportunity to get healthy to evaluate him fairly, I would say. Because you've only evaluated him one year. They've only evaluated him that last year. Prior to that, you can't evaluate him with Hugh Jackson and Todd Haley and Freddie Kitchen. Like, you can't evaluate him with that. Well, except Jay, with, with Hugh Jackson, he was no good. But when they got rid of Hugh Jackson, second half of that year for a rookie quarterback, I thought he was quite good, actually. Mm -hmm. And then he's right. He's had success. He had a year where it was like, okay, he can play the position. Then he gets hurt, and not so much. But the fact is, he's not a big guy. He's probably going to – he's not a fast guy. That means there's a good chance, even behind a good offensive line, he can have an injury issue. Where are you on Baker Mayfield? It felt to me like Andrew Barry's like, okay, I'm in a hold position. So I'm sitting here saying, do I draft a quarterback, somebody to compete for the spot? Do I go after a guy like Malik Willis from Liberty, a guy who has the chance to be potentially pretty good in the league, let him compete for the position? And then next year, obviously, what, Baker's owed $18 million. Next year, I think it's like 18.5. Yeah. Let him prove it. I almost feel like Andrew Barry is saying all the right things by saying – Here's your opportunity. Yes, this year you were plagued with injuries. We're rewarding you essentially because we already gave you your fifth-year extension. Um, and go for it. Give us the best shot. But if we can't do it next year, then we need to find the right people or the right person to fill that position. Now, what my problem is, though, Key, is like, okay, as a number one pick, I'll take Eli as a Giants fan, right? Yes. Eli Manning, as a number one pick, you go, mm, you're expecting more from your number one, I've seen before he won the Super Bowl. But the one thing about Eli is he could keep it together like a solid quarterback, and he never missed a game. He was an Iron Man, right? And then when it mattered most, it so happens he was an all-time clutch player. Now I look at Baker Mayfield. You drafted him one overall. He has not – he's been a good quarterback when he's on the field and healthy, he can play. But he hasn't been healthy a lot, and now you're relying to get value at that pick – on him being Superman when it matters most, you can't just assume he's going to do that. He can't stay healthy. You don't know how clutch he can be in the playoffs. And so now you're just evaluating him as a quarterback. And like you said, he's all right. Well, you've seen him in the playoffs. So you have that small sample size of evaluation from a year ago in 2020. Right. You One saw game. him in yeah. the playoffs. That he won. He's never going to be Eli Manning's size. Eli Manning, that's why I always say when you're itty-bitty, it's going to be problems. The NFL is made of big dudes. They're, it, NFL is big by nature, you can't have too many itty bitties. Itty bitty who can't run. Baker Mayfield is short, but he's not small. Mm -hmm. He's a thick little sucker, right? He's he's he is, and you have got to evaluate a healthy Baker Mayfield before you make long term commitments and decisions. He's already tied in the nineteen million dollars, like Jay said. Now you just do. If it was me. I want him to come back healthy. Do I want to keep Case Keenum around? Yeah, I'll keep Case Keenum around, whatever. And at that point, I want to see what he is. I'm not ready to give him a long-term extension. And if for some reason he turns back into 2020 Baker Mayfield, I may be inclined to give him a franchise tag at whatever the number is. I think the number probably is going to be closer to $40 million. Oh, 40? I can't. I'm fine with that. I'm fine I with can't that, do that because my salary cap is going up anyway, and I'm okay with that because then if he takes me in 2023 at $40 million and does what I want him to do that he did in 20 and 22, and he does it again in 23, now we can talk long-term extension. That, but, Keith, but my whole thing is – And if not, out dude, the door. Dudes like – Kirk Cousins, yeah. Dak Prescott. Let's uh, just keep that in mind that played on the franchise tag as quarterback. Yeah. They wind up betting on themselves, 
and it paid off. I mean, I like Kirk Cousins fine. I'm not giving him no big deal. Dak is different. But if you look at Carson Wentz, Jared Goff, all these guys who got paid like they were elite, but they weren't, that comes back, that comes back to bite you. Baker can work at the right number. If they if right now, if, if he had a nice season in Cleveland's like next. here's 3 years at 23 million a year. Okay. But when you start talking 40, 40 for this million. dude. But you can't but see Max. I mean I hope he gets paid good for him. Max, I'm just saying. You can't you can't look at it like that. You can't go 40 million for this dude. That's the reality of the position and that's what the numbers are. And that's what the franchise tag numbers are. You cannot say to yourself, well, I'm just going to let him walk out the door. Yes. You would pay Dak Prescott long-term. You mentioned Jared Goff. You mentioned Carson Wentz. When they made the decision to pay those two dudes, those two dudes was at the top of their game. But the problem is, Jay, as the job of a GM, and Andrew Barry is an analytical guy, right, you you must properly price commodities. The players Mm -hmm. are – especially in a hard cap league, right? That's what I I mean. I just hear forty million. I hear Baker Mayfield in the same breath, and I just start to cringe a little bit. I'm be honest. It's the reality. I hear what you say. The market may dictate that, but that doesn't mean I have to give it to him. Word. (laughs) Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.